I have been dying to check out something like this for a while, ever since the Cheerson CX-10C was announced, basically. And now, thanks to the people over at geekbuying.com, I'm going to get the chance to. This is the FQ777-954. It is a Wi-Fi FPV, and as you can see, it's small. It's teeny tiny. There are three different colors of this available, black, red, and white. And I suppose we'll see which one they actually sent me. So, open it up. It is the white one. Doesn't really matter all that much to me. The more important thing to me was just the ability to actually fly and make video and be this small. And I do realize it's not gonna be ultra high quality video. I think it's 640 by 480, but it's really about the principle of the thing at this point. But anyway, in terms of what comes in the package, you get a spare set of four props, cause you will probably need those. You get a teeny tiny little USB charger. Same one you'll see in the grand majority of these little tiny quads like this. User manual should give you all the info as to how you record video and change rates and everything. There's your layout of the quad. Here's your layout of the transmitter. And it looks like the flips are done with the right stick. Speed control is done with the left stick. And perhaps I'm missing something, but it doesn't mention the camera here. And on the front, it shows an actual smartphone controlling the Wi-Fi of it. So maybe there's Wi-Fi built into it. It said something about Wi-Fi on the outside. And there you go. Pictures and video operation ways of RC101W. Software download and installation. So there's one for iOS, one for Google Pally, <laughs> Android. And apparently 360. What's the 360 one? I'll have to look into that. But let's take a quick look at the controller. Yep, you've got two sticks. They're actually decent sized sticks, not bad at all. Both pressy. And there's your trim buttons. They'll get the job done. And it has a little screw in there so I can't actually open it up at the moment. Here's the quadcopter itself. It's still got these little ties on it. I'm gonna have to cut those off. I just don't have any wire cutters on me at the moment. But there's your lens. That should be a 640 by 480 camera right there. Built-in battery, if I had to assume it would be the 100 or 110 milliamp hour battery. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Here on this side, you will see your micro SD card slot. Does not have a micro SD card inserted. On the opposite side, you've got your charging port as well as your on-off switch. Go ahead and flip that on, and you can see the colors there. So you have green in the front and red in the back. I actually kind of like that. And then a little blue LED on top, which I would assume is your recording indicator, or at least your camera power on indicator. And that looks like that's where it'll actually flash to let you know that it's recording. Well, I've gone ahead and looked up the app. It's called RC Leading by Lei Wei. I don't know. We're gonna go ahead and install it on my phone. Let's just take a look when I open it up. If you'd like to fly by mobile phone, put the controller off. I definitely don't want to do that. It's a 720p start though. I'm that's interesting. Let's go ahead and get everything powered up and powered on, make it, make sure it works. And in case you're curious what it sounds like, it's probably gonna sound like a Cheerson CX-10, something like that. But there you go. Yep, that's what it sounds like. Well, I uh, was doing a little bit of looking around. I tried to put a micro SD card in it, but apparently this is not a micro SD model. If you get really close up on this, there's not really a way to insert a micro SD card into it. like. If I try to put it in this way, it's, there's no place for it. If I try to put it in this way, there's no place for it. However, if you go into the app, I went ahead and connected to the 954, I guess we'll call this, over Wi-Fi. If I hit play, there you go. You can actually see what's going on on the screen. And I should be able to control it just by flying it. I might even be able to control it with, no, can't control it with this at the moment. However, I can hit the record button here, and I'm guessing it's just gonna record to the phone at this point. So doing this, for example, I'd be able to see What's going on on my screen? What's going, hello there. You can kind of, there we go. Kind of see me there. Oh, and I can already feel it's getting kind of warm right here. It's definitely getting a little bit warm on top there. But anyway, it's probably time to go ahead and take it around a little bit, maybe do a little bit of flight capture with the, the video. We'll just sort of see what happens. So let's try this. First rate, there's the spin, not bad. Second rate, spin, seems a little faster. Third rate spin, maybe a little bit faster. Yeah, that's actually decently fast, performant. Flip. Gives itself a bit of throttle before and after, which it apparently needs pretty much. And we're back in beginner rate, not a whole lot of pitch there. There's your mid-rate funnels, but high rate funnels, not bad. Try it in mid-rate. It's a bit bit easier to control. I am bad at all. Okay, well I've flown this thing around a few times at this point and I wanted to go ahead and give my thoughts and opinions on it. Basically, the camera in it is a nice novelty, but it's not great. Uh, having to control it using the app, especially considering that the controller, as you can see, is teeny tiny and does not have a place to actually mount a smartphone, 
means that it's just going to be awkward. I've not actually tried controlling the quadcopter itself using the app. I'm sure it is a possibility, it's just not something that I'd prefer. It might actually be really interesting to try controlling it with something like the NVIDIA Shield, the original Shield Portable with the sticks on it. But just in terms of general flight characteristics, this thing is very nice and smooth and maneuverable. It's very stable. Uh, mine in particular it seems to drift in one direction or the other. As you can see, it's kind of up and drifting to the left. No matter how much trim I give it to the right, it's still going to go to the left just every time I've tried. But I mean, other than that one little bit of drift, it's very nice and smooth and stable. I mean, if I spin it around, I can just spin it on one finger pretty much. That's awesome. In terms of the flips, it does lose a bit of height and it gives itself a lot of throttle before it does a flip, as you can see. Because I'm not actually touching anything and it gives itself that much throttle before and after. But it's definitely not bad. In terms of the rates, I showed the funnels earlier, but uh, even beginner rate indoors works really well. This is medium rate though. Medium rate's probably my favorite. Uh, I will say though, turning from left to right, you can't do it fast. There, it's not twitchy. And I'm guessing that's because it's a camera, it's supposed to be a camera quad. So if I go left to right, we go left and then right. It takes like half a second before it actually starts responding and going back the other direction. You can see me doing that now maybe. But still, I mean, even with that little bit, as long as you're being kind of careful with your movements, it's really not bad. And it is an awful lot of fun to fly. I mean, I haven't been flying much in terms of quadcopters lately, but I found myself coming back to this over and over again, just wanting to fly it around and not actually using it as a camera. In terms of the battery life, it's actually been right at about five minutes. The LVC warning will come on at about 4 minutes 30, 4 minutes 45 seconds, depending. The times I've flown it, it's either come on at 4.30 or 4.45, and the quad itself is turned off at either 4.45 or 5 minutes. Which, for a quad of this size, with a camera built into it, and using it while recording, that's really, really impressive. So all in all, this is not a bad little quad in the slightest. I just wish, one, that it had the micro SD card slot instead of requiring an app. And two, that it didn't do that weird left to right spinning thing that, that it's doing. But even that is not such a big deal as long as you're pretty deliberate in the way you're flying it. So I will have a link to where you can pick this up down in the video description. Thanks so much to Geek Buying for sending this out for me to take a look at. Thanks to you guys for watching. Remember to hit the like button below this video if you like this video. Subscribe to receive more of my videos when they become available. And we'll see you next time. Now the one thing I'm not seeing here, I'm not seeing an app drawer. So I'm assuming that all the apps you've got are going to be... Yeah, they're going to be on your next home screen and your next home screen. Do keep in mind, though, you can always...